Okay, you ready na. So, good morning, class. Good morning, Miss Hello. Good morning, Miss Hello. Okay. Before we start our lessons for today, may I request everyone to stand for the prayer. Brianna Vince Milgar, please lead the prayer. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day, our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who forgive us. Do not bring us to the test, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. So please remain standing. Let's have our energizer. Pwede din mo magdukta class. Dili madungog ang music. Dili madungog. Ayaw pag-mute. Dili madungog. Ayaw na lang pag-mute, Earl. Wala ang gamit. Wala ang gamit. Sa inyo lang cellphone na, pareha ganit ha? Ano lang, oi, sige, continue lang. Okay rin na. Continue, continue. Ikaw lang, pwede na na-cut. Ay, naka-cut. Balik na lang ka. Ay, na lang, oh. Okay rin, continue. Sige, play na ko. Sige. Hindi na mo siguro start ang music. Sige, play na ko ha. Sige, play na. Wait, tingog. Bala, wait, tingog. Lagun, pagtanan. Sige na, class. Sayaw na ta para di na ta magdug ka. Balik na, okay. One, two, three. Wala dyan siya tingog. Okay, Ranay? Next. So next. So ano sa naman yun na future on class? Wala na nagdukla. Wala na mga. Wala na. Wala na. Wala na mga. Teacher Anali. So hi. Hello. 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 Hi. Okay. Hello. Before we are going to start our new lesson, we have here jumbled letters and we will let you guess of what will be our topic for today's session. Anyone, can you please raise your hand if you want to answer? Yes, Miss Crystal J. I think our lesson for today is all about constructivist theory and teaching social studies. Yes, you are correct. Thank you for that. 
So the topic that we are going to tackle for today's session is all about constructivist theory in teaching social studies. But before that, we will go first to the learning outcomes, which will be discussed by Ms. Shallow. So Ms. Shallow. Thank you, Teacher Emily. Learning outcomes. In this lesson, the students will be able to first analyze constructivism as an edu educational philosophy, second, examine the implication of constructivism in the social studies curriculum. Next, teacher Annalie. Thank you, Michelle. So let's now proceed to our main topic, which is the constructivism. So upon hearing the word constructivism, what comes out to your mind? Kindly please raise your hand if you have an idea. Yes, Miss Angelica. It is the theory that says learners construct knowledge rather than just passively take in information. Yes, Miss Angelica, thank you for that. So here we are for further information about constructivism. So constructivism is the theory of learning that has roots in both philosophy and psychology. Since constructivism is a philosophy of learning. Next, we have learners actively construct their own knowledge and meaning from their experiences. First nut of 1996, Steph and Gail of 1995. So in constructivism, learners construct and reflect or they build their own representations or knowledge based on their experiences rather than just take in or receiving information as what Angelica mentioned earlier. So it means that they themselves can already figure out or learn something with their own experiences. For example, an elementary teacher presents a class problem to measure the length of the Mayflower. Rather than starting the problem by introducing the ruler, the teacher allows students to reflect and to construct their own methods of measurement. Then one student offers the knowledge that the doctor said. He said he is four feet tall. Another says she knows horses are measured in hands. So the students discuss those and other methods they have heard about. They come to learning situations with already formulated knowledge, ideas, and understanding. So questions and clarifications before we will move on to the other parts of this topic. Anyone? None so far. So far, mom. Okay, good. So I will now pass you to the next reporter, Ms. Shallow, for the continuation. Okay, thank you, Teacher Annalie. Now, we have the basic tenets of constructivism. And this basic tenets means the principle. Von Glissersfield proposed three essential epistemological tenets 
of constructivism to which Ford has been added in light of recent writings. First, knowledge is not possibly accumulated, but rather it is the result of active cognizing by the individual. So the students are urged to learn or are urged to be actively involved in their own process of learning. So meaning they shall be active in playing their part as they are the student centered in constructivism. Therefore, the teachers function only more as a facilitator who coaches, mediates, and helps students develop and assess their understanding and thereby their learning. For example, allowing the students room to experiment, ask questions, and learning activities require the students to full participation in class. Second, Cognition is an adaptive process. So when we say adaptive, what comes into your mind, class? Okay, Juris. If I heard the word adaptive, ang akong ma-associate ma na kay, like, basta ba, for example, ka ng bata, kay, ka ng, ready siya mo adapt, or ready siya mo bakat on sa mga bago na mga lessons na ngayon, hatag sa teacher. Ora, thank you. Very good. Very good, Juris. Okay, so when we say adaptive, so makakakuan dito ka nga, flexible. So, meaning, your learnings or knowledge must be flexible because there would be new information that would change the way we believe things. So, for example, sa una, git ka nang um, mo ka nang mo sa una mo tuo ka o ka nang di una nato, pero sa scientific process nga, ikaw, naanak ay nahibawan ka ron nga sa scientific process, wala tayo di una nato, dili sila mo tuo mga ning anak, kay nasa, so dapat, ka ron kay nakaibaw naman ka sa new information na sa scientific nga na mas convincing man ila kayo na mas sila evidence so karon dili na kamutuo so dapat flexible yun ang imong mind nga na yung mga changes mga new information nga imong makuan ma ma-adapt third is cognition or Organizes and makes sense of one's experience and is not a process to render an accurate representation of reality. So it is our mind that creates our learning that makes sense. And last, knowing has roots in both biological or neurological constructions and social, cultural, and, and language-based interactions. So... Our experiences or ang atong knowledge would be more meaningful if it is a product of social interaction. So if we inter uh, interacting with other people helps you to organize your thoughts, reflect your understanding, find gaps in your reasoning, and guides your responses to the people you interact with every day. So these four tenets serves serve as the foundation for the basic principles of constructivism. How have uh, constructivisms in teaching, learning, and knowing process? However, it can be emphasized in various ways, resulting in various types of constructivism. So that's it. Think, um, let me pass to the next um, report, teacher Maxine. Um, thank you, Teacher Shiloh. So, this time class, I'm going to introduce to you the two persons who are involved in this theory. So, in the modern period, more specifically in the field of psychology, the idea of cognitive construction was first fashioned into a comprehensive theory by James Mark Baldwin and Jean Piaget. So, they were able to map the procedures and operations on the constructions of of a stable experimental world of having access to only sensation and the operation of the mind. So, class, both Baldwin and Piaget could draw on a source that had not been available to Kant and Vico, which is the theory of evolution. So, kini si Kant and Vico class, mo ni sila ang mga 
psychology nga na involved sa theory of evolution. Then, by the way, class, James Mark Baldwin was among the first in the United States to study the normal development of children. So, kini si James Mark Baldwin, kimoni siya ang nag-study sa development of every children. So, among his lasting contributions to the field was his idea about an infant's imitation. And he also argued that early imitative movements were the, were the basis early learning. So, in the infant imitated a pleasurable event in order to continue the pleasure. So, while Piaget class or Jane Piaget is a considered as the father of constructivist view of learning. So, si, uh, sa, sa ako pang gisulti kanina kasi si James Mark Baldwin, kimoto siya ang nag-study sa development of every children. But kini si Jane Piaget, mauni siya ang nagkanang Mone siya ang father sa kanang magkuan sa every learning sa, sa students or every person. So, as a biologist, he was interested on in how an organism adapts to an environment and how previous mental knowledge contributes to behaviors. So, he, he is also known as the one of the first theorists in constructivist. So, he proposed the constructivism theory of learning that involves the use of existing knowledge to gain a new knowledge. This existing knowledge class is integrated with new information to expand the knowledge on individual processes. So, before we, um, I proceed to the next reporter, so is there any questions or clarifications? None so far. None so, far. so, thank you, class. So, now I proceed to, uh, let's proceed to the next part of our discussion. So may I call on teacher Francis to continue the discussion. So thank you teacher Maxine. Good day class. So today we will tackle about the types of constructivism. So the first type of, con of constructivism is cognitive constructivism. So this is typically asso associated with information processing and relies heavily on the component process of cognition. So cognition, cognitive, the definition of cognitive is a mental faculty of knowing which includes perceiving, recognizing, conceiving, judging, reasoning, and imagining. So, cognitive constructivism, it emphasizes that in order to acquire knowledge, an individual has an active role in recognizing any stimuli that form part of his or her experiences. So, according to Piaget the I, acknowledge learning is that cognitive constructivism is not merely transmitted verbally by the teacher, but must be constructed and reconstructed by the learning. Human beings must build their own knowledge and meaning through experience. Learning is an active process of assimilation and accommodation. So the example of this is active experiences, which what you experience every day making errors and looking for solutions. So the cognitive constructivism theory differs from the other two and the two beliefs. The knowledge is the result of the accurate internalization and reconstruction of external reality. Next. So thus perspective of learning focuses on so this perspective of learning focuses on, first we have the process of learning. So in the process of learning, the learner should get the emphasis or should I say to point up or to draw attention about what they've learned. Or learners must actively develop their knowledge and they must also be responsible for their learning outcomes. So, we have for B, how experiences are represented or symbolized in the mind. So, prior to their knowledge, they point up or draw attention of what they've learned based on their experiences. In addition, by reflecting on how experiences represented or symbolized in the mind, they construct their own understanding of the world we live in. Each of them generates their own rules and mental models, which 
uh, which they use to make sense of their experience. So, Teacher Frances, or... Thank you, Teacher Annalise. So, for C, how representations are organized within the mind. So, representation refers to the basic idea that if students see people like them reflected in course materials, they are more likely to identify with and be able to imagine themselves as belonging in the field. Thank you, and let's proceed to the next teacher, Teacher Jessa. Thank you, Teacher Princess. Now, let's talk about the radical constructivism. This believes that the acquisitions of knowledge is an adapted process that could be attributed from the active cognitions of an individual while translating on experientially based mind. So, this believes knowledge or ideas, concept, process, insight, or etc. That's all is adapted, like our homes, then sa school, daghan kay tagma adapt then about sa technology, daghan kay tagma adapt ing anak class. And then, there is an external nature of knowledge and recognize the existence of an external reality. It, this means it maintains that there is external knowledge also. It recognizes the existence of an external reality that is knowable to the individual. For example, physical environment diva class mo ex mo exist juna and then our body from kids and to karon from adult from kids to adults so mo exist jud ang atong body and then knowledge is a constructed from experience but the way it is the constructed is not an accurate presentations of the external world or reality it means that knowledge is not objective truth, rather a variable of experience. These models are created within individual and influenced by various contexts. Then according to Stever, 1995, precisely articulate this idea with, the, with when he said that knowledge is knowledge of the knower. The external word improving knowledge means improving its viability of fit in, but not much with an external word. That's all. And may I call Teacher Tisha to continue our topic. Thank you, Teacher Jessa. Hello, dear students. So we'll talk about social constructivism. Social constructivism as a school at Thought lies between the transmission of knowledge, knowledgeable reality of the cognitive constructivist and the construction of a personal reality of the radical constructivist. Upholds the social nature of knowledge and that knowledge is a result of social interaction and language usage. Knowledge is shared experience. Social interaction occurs within a social sociocultural context. The truth is socially constructed, which evolved from the co-participation in cultural practices. So social constructivism simply emphasizes how meanings and understandings grow out of social encounters. This means that knowledge is the result of interactions between both subjective and environmental factors. For example, si teacher na igihatag na activity, which is group problem solving. So if students work in pain, they are interacting with people and therefore can learn different academic ideas from one another. This shows that students learn from each other. They can assist one another and co-construct knowledge. That would be all for my part. Thank you. I will pass you all to the next reporter, Teacher Hazel. Thank you, Miss Tisha. Good morning, class. By the way, I am Ms. Hazel Mariposki, and I am here to discuss the factors that are essential in constructivist pedagogy. So before I'll proceed to the first factor, I will discuss first what constructivist pedagogy is all about. With constructivist pedagogy, 
pedagogy, teachers encourage students to build their own knowledge via experiences and activities rather than through lectures on abstract ideas. So let's now proceed to the first factor, which is authentic and real world environments are necessary for learning to take place. In this factor, for learning to occur, authentic and real world setting are required. They give students an opportunity to showcase their work to others. Journal is an example of authentic learning task designed to showcase the student's work as well as give the student a means to reflect back on his or her learning. Provides actual learning context. When we say learning context, it is defined as a situation in which something is learned or understood. A situation that can impact how something is learned or what is th thought. When you take advice from a friend but would not take the exact exact same advice if given by your mother, this is an example of a situation in which the learning context matters. And lastly, provides the action that fuels mental activity. That's all. So, do you have any question? None so far, means. So far. That's good. So, let me call on Miss Sabas to continue the discussion. So thank you, Teacher Hazel. I am audible. Yes, Teacher. Yes. yes. So as I continue to Teacher Hazel discussion, so social negoci negotiation and mediation should be taken into account in any form of learning. So in social negotiation, it encompasses into the establishing capabilities of learners. It voluntarily process in which parties reach agreement through various consents that mediation it is a process wherein meet with a mutually selected impartial and neutral person who assists them in the negotiation of their differences that's why it's necessarily in learning so social interaction occurs within a social cultural context resulting in knowledge that is hard to a specific time and place. So, naili maka-example ang social interaction. The first one, exchange. Second one, competition. The third one, conflict. The fourth one, cooperation. And the last one is accommodation. For example, when says hi or waves to neighbor or generating an activities, because they can be played in groups, consist of topics, learn at the lesson. Lang One culture teaches children to play with toys, while the other encourages them to play outdoors. Children from both cultures teach, teach them. If a culture encourages talking, they will learn to do so. So, language is an integral part of social mediation. Language is one of the most parts of any culture. It is the way by which people communicate with one another. So, for example, kanya nga tong gibuhat na nag-communicate ta through reporting. So, is there any clarification or question on the discussion I had? If none, I'm giving that turn to Teacher Marvin. Okay, thank you, Teacher Shani. The third factors, content and skills are made significant to the learners. Knowledge serves as an adaptive function. So, content and skills are very important to both learners and educators. Like, for example, when teachers have the opportunity to identify the context, content, and skills in a focused and thoughtful way, it allows them to more deeply understand the standard in order to develop assessment that truly reflect understanding to the learners. So it means it's easy for the teacher to present their lesson if they identify the content so that so that the learners can understand the can deeply understand the lesson. So is there any clarification or question in the third content? No content sir. Other factors? Answer. Then so, so far, sir. 
So to continue the discussion, let us hear Teacher Iris. Thank you, Sir Marvin. So in my topic, we'll talk about learners' prior knowledge is fundamental in the acquisition of content and skills. So the first one is learning begins with an individual schema or prior knowledge. For example, for this topic, learners' prior knowledge is the information and educational context a learner already and has before they learn new information. So before sila mo enter sa eskwelahan is mag, mag start mag na siya sa balay. So pagtulo sa mga bata aron ini sulod nila sulod nila or interest nila sa school na sila ma learn na knowledge. For the second one is teachers will be able to create effective experiences if they understand the students prior knowledge. So Another example for this assessment the instructor Instructor will come to know the intent to which students' prior knowledge is accurate. For inaccurate, we'll need to send some time helping students to come to terms with their misconceptions before they can go on to help students build with new knowledge. Again, the ease of or difficulty of such a task will lie in students making a conscious or unconscious decision to hold on to such misconceptions. In such a case, the inadequate and inaccurate prior knowledge will tend to hinder learning. Therefore, as indicated earlier on, the instructor will benefit from spending some time to determine the extent and nature of students' prior knowledge and skills. In other terms, the more we understand about what students already think and the more we help them engage their prior understandings, and the more they are likely to learn well and less likely they are to misinterpret the material in our courses. So, may kanang nai pangutan na sa ko lesson? Then so far. So, may I call on Teacher Earl to continue the discussion. Thank you, Teacher Irish. Formative assessment should be done to inform future learning experience. It means that formative assessment is very, very important to know what kind of adjustment needed in a future learning experience. For, for example, by doing short pieces after the discussion, from that, you will know if the student really understands your lesson based on their scores. And knowledge acquisition and knowledge acquisition is an active and ongoing process. It means that knowledge acquisition is a never-ending process. And I have a question. Just raise your hand if you know the answer. Does a 60-year-old person can still acquire knowledge? Okay, Brianna. Yes. A 60-year-old person can still acquire knowledge. Thank you, Brianna, for answering my, my question. Yes, you are correct. A 60-year-old person can still acquire knowledge. Like, for example, you will teach the 60-year-old person on how to use a gadget. From that, the 60-year-old person acquired knowledge on how to use a gadget. And also, continuous ass assessment accounts a learner's level of understanding in an ongoing teaching and learning process. It means that by doing continuous assessment, you will know the student's level of understanding. And from that, you will know if you need adjustment in your teaching and use a different type of study in teaching. Do you, do you have any questions or clarifications? None so far, sir. So I'm going to pass you to the to teacher in your domain. So, hi class. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So, so, constructivism encourages learners. Constructivism is important because students must learn how to articulate their ideas clearly as well as to collaborate on talks effectively by sharing in group projects. 
it also helps engage and encourage students by making them take a more active role in the learning process. Metacognition knowledge of cognition knowing what one knows what one is capable of doing what to do and when to do it regulation of cognition the ongoing task of planning monitoring and evaluating one's own learning and cognition so Constructivism has been a very powerful model for explaining how knowledge is produced in the world as well as how students learn. As what I've said earlier, it also helped engage and encourage by making them making them take or move more active role in the learning process. And what I've said earlier first it is important because students must learn how to how to articulate their ideas clearly as well as to as well as to collaborate on on talks effectively by by sharing in group projects so that's all do you have questions or clarifications? No, Not so far, Mom. Not so far, Miss. Okay, thank you. So I'm going to pass it to Angel K. Polido. So thank you, Miss Angel. Teachers should act as guide and facilitators of learning. Means as a facilitator, the teacher encourages the full participation of students promote mutual understanding. For example, we as a future educators, we must guide lead our students properly so that they can understand stand and learn from their own through our guidance. Next, the teacher creates experience that leads students to knowledge processing and accusations. The example where this is me as a teacher, I will tell them my story so that they can scope and also learn the knowledge of what I experiences. Next, Teachers are seen as guide on the side instead of sage on the stage. The example where this is guide on the side means the teacher implements student-centered learning in which the student has agency and it's made to think rather than to memorize. And students kono ani mas makating sila kaisa memorize and Sage on the stage means who stands in front of the classroom and imparts knowledge to remember. Must prefer the students any ang na sa front sa young classmates kay kay makaremember siya o recite. And next, teacher guide the students to an awareness of their experience socially agree up by meanings and the example for this is as a teacher we must guide our students so that they are aware of their experiences and also in the, in a day, the communication to others So far, teacher. Class. Okay, I will pass to Miss Kate Obenza. Thank you. So, hello, class. Lastly, number eight, teachers must employ multiple perspectives and representations of content. 
Madungogra ko. Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Yes, Okay, thank you. The relationship between multiple perspective is casual in cognitive constructivism. When learning about a certain phenomenon or event, learners can have the resources needed to generate a variety of representation if they are given many perspective or lenses to look through. Like for example, scaffolding, where teachers continually adjust the level of his or her help in response to the learner's level of performance. Scaffolding can include modeling a skill, providing hints, and adapting material or activity, which is instructional, instructional materials. So, multiple perspectives perspective lens, various roads to knowledge retrieval, capacity to use more complex schemas re relevant to experience. The perspective provides the student with a great, greater opportunity to develop a more viable model of their experiences and social interaction in making their existence more meaningful. Any questions or clarification before we proceed to our quiz class? None so far, Miss. So far, Miss. Okay, let's proceed to our quiz. Teacher Anami, uh, Teacher Tisha. So let's proceed to our quiz. So the um, quiz in our class is through Google Form. So isan na naman siya sa kuan ha chat box. And nani siya time limit. Kuan siya 9 to 1030. Excuse me guys. Ako lang niya isan dang link sa JC. Thank you. Okay, Miss Tisha. So, before we end this discussion, uh, let me share you this code. Education is not an affair of telling and being told, but an active and constructive process. So far, so good. That's it for our discussion for today. Thank you. Thank you, class, for listening and participating. We hope you learned something. Once again, good morning and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, teacher. Thank you. Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye.